Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talos of Talks. And as the title suggests, I wanted to talk a little bit about our app today, which we've had a lot of fun designing and a lot of fun testing. And we've had a limited beta go out for those of you who don't know. If you want to follow updates and for things that are coming to the Talos of app, make sure you're following at Talos of Dev, D-E-V on Twitter for updates, because I'm not a coder. For those of you who don't know, I'm not the one designing this app. Frankly, it wasn't even my idea. We had fans come forward with ideas and they wanted to design a Talos of app and they wanted basically my approval and my stamp of yes, go ahead, you can do it. And I've been working with them and basically my role on the app is essentially like Steve Jobs's role on the iPhone. They just kind of hand it to me and I say, this is good. This needs some work. And hopefully I try to do it in a nicer way than Steve would do it. But some of you may be wondering why the Talos of development team launched a GoFundMe page. And I want you guys to know for the record, I completely approved of this. We haven't really done GoFundMe stuff in the past, but given what the app developers and the team over there working on the app pitched to me as to why they think they should start a GoFundMe, I thought it was a justifiable cause. For those of you who don't know, here's the situation. We're designing the app to get more and more features and have it be more bug free so that it's stable, high resolution, and you can enjoy all the Talos of content in one hub for people who are kind of diehard Talos of fans who love watching all of the different channels or all the different podcasts. You love just enjoying Talos of content in general, so you want one centralized place for all of it. Completely understand that some people don't want the app at all, and you're always going to watch us through YouTube, Twitch, or your standard podcast app. That's totally fine. We're not abandoning any of these platforms. We need these platforms for growth, so we're not ditching YouTube or Twitch. We're just expanding a little bit. We're diversifying the income, and we're providing a little love letter user interface experience for the people out there who love supporting Talosif. The tricky part about supporting Talosif is we want our content to be free. We want it to be free of charge for you to just open your phone or your tablet or your computer and just be able to watch my videos or watch my live streams. YouTube allows us to do that because it's a free platform with free hosting, but for free, that means you've got to put up with some ads. Ads are not fun. I pay for YouTube Premium. I pay for Twitch Turbo. I pay for that extra Hulu option that allows there to be no ads because I don't like ads, but ads, I do have to admit, are kind of nice because they allow your content to be free to watch. YouTube reimburses me by putting ads on my videos and that's how so many people watch Talosif for free. We want to do the same thing with this app. We want people who really love the Talosif network to be able to experience and use the app for free so there's not some kind of paywall behind it. But that means that there has to be ads for the app. There's really no way around that because as of right now, for those of you who are in the beta program, you'll notice that when you use the Talosif app, when you click on the videos and start watching them, there's no commercials. So basically the 450 people who are in the beta program right now, which down the road we would like to expand, but we're keeping it small for now. You're all just kind of enjoying Talos of content for free. And that means that because there's no ads on the app, I lose a little bit of money when you guys watch Talos of content on the app. Now, I'm not upset about that because 450, while it may seem like a big number in the grand scheme of YouTube AdSense, it's really not that much. And for the record, that's why we're keeping it quite limited because if we had an ever so expanding beta program, that would mean basically anyone who watches my videos could suddenly watch them ad-free through our app, and then maybe I could start losing significant money. We don't want that to happen because buying things like the Galaxy Fold or the next iPhone, the next Apple Watch, or the modular Mac Pro, all that stuff costs money, as does Wi-Fi sets. Basically, producing content for the network costs money, so as much as I would love to do all this for free and out of the goodness of my heart, we all gotta make a living somehow, and this is how. So we want to embed ads within our app so that the app can continue to be free, and if all goes well, the ads won't be behave the way they do on YouTube, where you click on a video and ad plays for 30 seconds or 15 seconds, or you hit the skip button and then my video starts playing. For us, ideally, there would just be little tiles in the app that would have little pop-ups with ads on them for probably other apps or for phones or whatever Apple or Google decides to advertise within our app. That way it can be free. And then there would be some type of low cost monthly subscription to remove the ads for people who don't want to put up with the commercials, but also don't want to pay the price of YouTube premium or Twitch Turbo, which costs nine or $12 a month. If all goes well, this isn't set in stone, but if all goes well, the Talosev app would end up costing something like $3 a month. It wouldn't be much. And like I said, it wouldn't be required. If you just want to watch all our videos for free, there will just be little ads in the app and we'll try our best to not make them too intrusive, but fair warning, you'll probably notice them. Though we ran into a little bit of a problem with this ideal situation because we found out YouTube's policies suggest that if you're hosting your YouTube videos on some other site, or some other app and 
then monetizing it via YouTube's platform, they're not okay with that, as in it's not legal. YouTube would not be okay with us putting ads on the app given right now, the app is basically pulling the videos directly off YouTube and just displaying them in our app. YouTube's still doing all the hosting and that's why when I upload a new video, if all things go well, sometimes there's bugs, but if all things go well, it'll immediately just show up in the app right now because I just uploaded it to YouTube. So the team has worked and thought really hard about this and I've been engaged in the discussion as well about what they want to do about it. And they've discovered that the best way we can still achieve this goal of making the Talos of app free is if we start paying for our own server space, which is something you can do. You can pay other companies that have servers a certain price so that you can host a certain amount of data or videos or content on their servers. And then we will have the Talos of app grabbing content off of that server instead of YouTube, which means, yay, we can put ads on the app. We can make it free. We just have to upload our videos to that server and YouTube as well, which really does sound quite complicated for those who don't know. But currently our developer is working on a way and he's working working actually on a Mac application that is kind of custom built for me that will simply allow me to upload videos to YouTube and this custom server that we're hoping to invest in simultaneously. So it's not like the app is gonna get something first or YouTube will get something first and then I'll have to upload the video again to the app. If all goes well, we'll be able to publish both simultaneously. A lot of this is still in the conceptual stage. For those curious, we haven't decided on a certain company servers that we want to invest in. There's not one particular server we chosen yet. We're trying to find one that's affordable and that can meet our needs. But basically, the more gigs you put up there and the more people trying to pull down that content from the internet, the more money it's going to cost. So we've easily discovered that in order to just start testing this app and start putting ads so that we can expand the beta program, because as soon as we put ads on the app and build in the subscription model, that means that I can still upload content. Lots of people can watch it through the Talos of app and I'll still be monetized from it and I can still get paid so that I can keep doing what I do, there's going to be a little bit of a down payment in this process. We've been doing it all for free so far. The app developers have been working really hard and they're not getting paid by me because this was all their idea and they didn't really want to be paid up front. They just wanted to make something cool and we've agreed on contracts on what they'll get paid via app revenue down the road. But for the most part, we've had a budget of zero dollars essentially and the idea with the GoFundMe was simply to say, okay, let's accept some donations from fans that can be designated to go to a specific cause. So this money that you donate to the GoFundMe will basically go to host those servers that we need to invest in in order to keep the Talos of app free. Does that make any sense? Down the road, once we get ads in the app and once we start making money off of it and people start subscribing to it for that monthly subscription model, then we're hoping that the people subscribing to the app and the AdSense we're making off the app will start paying for itself. So it's not like we're going to need to keep the GoFundMe around forever. This is just supposed to help fund the down payment in the early development process. And if all goes well, it'll start being self-sustaining and we'll be able to make money off the app while hosting it from our own server. And as a whole, we just kind of bypass YouTube as a hosting service overall, so they won't get mad at us. All my videos will continue to be uploaded to YouTube. I can keep streaming on Twitch and all that. But for those who want a centralized hub for Talos of content all in one place that we have more control over the user interface and the design of, fans will have the choice to enjoy our content that way too. So that's the gist of it. It's kind of the boilerplate explanation. There's a lot of different decisions the app developer team is making right now. I'm kind of a dummy when it comes to code and when it comes to exporting and uploading and working between servers and stuff like that. So I've kind of given you the basic version of it. But yeah, for any other kind of questions you may have about the Talos of development or the app or what may come out in the future, if you have ideas for the app or what you would like to see on it, don't direct all those ideas to the comments of this video. Definitely direct them to at Talos of dev on Twitter because that Twitter is 100% maintained by our development team who is working on the app. They've been doing an amazing job. We've had a pretty consistent record of sending out one app update a week every single Saturday. We publish another app update with more features that are added. And he has all kinds of great ideas that are more and more exciting every time he pitches them to me. And I'm constantly wondering like, do you know how to do that? Is that possible? Can you make that happen? And they always respond with, yeah, of course. Yeah, I can do that. It's fine. It's no problem. So I'm amazed by what these guys have achieved already and I do have a lot of faith in them and I'm quite excited to see where the app is headed in the future and by no means do I want you guys to feel required to support the GoFundMe it's not like
like if we don't reach the goal over there of $500 on the GoFundMe that we'll break apart the app entirely and it won't work out and we'll just have to cancel the whole project. That's not the situation. I just wanted people to know why the GoFundMe exists, give you a little bit of background on it, and of course understand what's going on behind the scenes with Taylosif. My job, my role at the company is still filming, editing, publishing all the content. That hasn't changed, I promise you. The amount of time I designate just to working on this app from my end is very little. I probably give it one hour to two hours a week as just communicating with the app developers. But yeah, still most of my job is still producing content and it's likely going to stay that way. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.